I remember I walked up into St. James's and my my hands, everything, my whole body just lit up. I've got goosebumps all over my skin. I get those goosebumps every time You come around, yeah You lose my mind, you make everything so fine Worry about those times I'm way too numb, yeah It's way too dumb, yeah I get those goosebumps every time I need the hype, throw that to the side, yo. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah When you're not around me, throw that to the side, yo. I get those goosebumps every time, yeah. 713, through the 21, yeah, I'm riding. Why they on me? Why they on me? I'm flying. I'm sipping low key. I'm sipping low key and hiding. It's my rider. I get those goosebumps every time. You come around, yeah. You lose my mind. You make everything go fine. Worry about those times. I'm way too numb, yeah. I get those goosebumps every time I need the hype Good evening, here we go, here we go again I love that, I love that little that little extra at the beginning uh, yeah, Let's see how it goes down, yeah, you know you know what happens if you mess with the goosebumps I get abuse, uh, <laughs> and that's just from Johnny um, But uh, yeah, uh, let's, let's, let's see what the... What the the fans think, I guess, of, of uh, the little tweaks to Goosebumps. And there'll be more tweaks along the way. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure they'll love it. I'm sure they'll love it. But we're here. Welcome to Lodi Mag and UFC. We're back for another talking tune where we pose some questions to our guests and people on the channel um, uh, tonight. So, uh, yeah, welcome all in. Uh, make sure you click those likes and we'll do all that good stuff. Um as of course, the uh, little housewarming and stuff, as we always do. But Daz, how are you on this Tuesday evening? You know, we've had a few days to kind of soak in the win. How are you feeling now, mate? I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm just hoping Chris can get in. Let's see. Let's see. I think Chris is in. No, he's frozen. We'll see. We'll give him a chance. He's fighting with his uh, broadband there in the hotel he's in. But uh, yeah, no, all good with me. It's actually a bit of sun here uh, in Ireland. Hey. Has, is winter finally over? I'm not so sure. Uh, I think there's more of it to come. But uh, yeah, a bit, a bit of sun to contend with. But yeah, all good on this Tuesday afternoon or evening. And uh, a few games on tonight as well to, to keep an eye on later on. But uh, all mm, good. Definitely. Well, I've got the opposite because I, I, we've had we've had lightning. Um, and <laughs> hail and rain, we, we, we are the complete opposite to you, mate. So, uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, hopefully it switches the other way <laughs> or, or we can get rid of all that bad weather. We're meant to be in spring right now, so, I don't know, but uh, look, um, great to have everyone in the chat. Thank you for everyone that's already in the chat tuning in. Make sure you get your questions in. Um, for the guys, and we're going to have a little section towards the end where we pose some of those questions to the boys. And look, um, I think in and out, in and out. Uh, I feel like I'm singing the Tino song um, uh, <laughs> with with, uh, with Chris's broadband at the moment is Wi-Fi. But look, let's get the boys in because they're waiting patiently in the green room. Uh, let's welcome in our nemesis uh, from Newcastle <laughs> Fans TV. Let's get in, uh, Johnny. Boo. <laughs> Hey Johnny, <laughs> it's a bit harsh. You know what I mean? Superman we himself won this trophy. Oh, oh, get oh, get 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 away! No, no, no. We don't want to see that. <laughs> we don't want to see that till next year. Go, go on, Not go on. Honest, <laughs> it, it looks good, doesn't it? It looks good. It does. Honestly, we've been looking after it at Newcastle fans TV. You have to after we work really, really hard to win that uh, prestigious trophy. Um, obviously, I think Pete's only just got over it. Um, you know. <laughs> I haven't. I'm not. I won't get over it until next year when we pick you up, mate. <laughs> no, definitely not. But uh, no, it was all for a great cause in the end. And obviously, you know, we're the two-time back-to-back champions. Oh, you get blue oh, in the oh, oh, You God. did that on purpose. Oh. <laughs> uh, do it again. The two-time back-to-back champions. Yeah, of I don't know of, I don't know NF, NUSC YouTube I don't know not the world obviously but uh, 
Yeah, I just thought I'd show it because I was probably, probably the closest you're ever going to get to it this year, lad. So there you go. Uh, madness. But no, look, great to have you on. Uh, as always, absolute pleasure. All that all that fun stuff aside, um, like you said, over £600 raised for a great cause. Um, great time to be with you guys in the pub afterwards. I'm gonna, having a laugh and a joke. It's all, all, it's all fun and games, but um, great to have you on. We're going to get some questions to you very shortly. I think we've got Chris potentially in and out. In and out. Um, a pixel version of Chris. Yeah, slight pixel version. Um, but no, welcome, Chris. Hope you're well. Um, as much as you you can say back to us, uh, but look, <laughs> let's get the other guests in. Uh, let's welcome uh, Specs, uh, Jordy Dread. Let's welcome back in uh, Specs to the house. Here's Specs. How welcome back, Specs. Big up, guys, man. Big up, man. I was I, I was starting to think you guys were neglecting me, man. I was thinking, what's going on, man? Let's get back on the show. You get me? But yeah, yeah. man. Big up to you guys. Big up to everyone in the, um, the panel and obviously the viewers and the chats. And yeah, I've been told to stay indoors, being a born and bred Tottenham lad. So I've just been stuck indoors, mate. I can't show my face around my local at the moment for well, a few weeks, I've been told. But yeah, happy days. Happy days, man. I'm and you wouldn't, want it, you wouldn't want it any other way, Specs. Oh, uh, no, brother. People still don't understand. People still ask me to now. Like, they're just not having it. They're like, you still support Newcastle? I'm like, still? You don't pick and ch- like, you don't chop and change. Like, this, I, I bleed black and white, man. That's it. End of, end of, man. Yeah, definitely. Great to have you on as well. And I think we might have Chris. A great to have Chris on as well. And lastly, uh, we've got Jordy Josh back for more. Welcome, Josh. Yes, Thank lads. You. How we're doing? All okay. Oh, yeah, good. Man. Very, very good. I mean, lads, we haven't even spoke since that charity match. I don't really want to speak about the result. Like, but all in all, Johnny, stop smiling. All in all, seniors in real life, and of course the NFTV boys as well. Uh, going to the pub later on. It was fantastic to meet you in real life. Uh, I fantastic the overall thing that's crossed when we talk about football, real football, and just kind of forget that charity match as well. <laughs> no, 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 Josh. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gosh, we're, we're with you. Me, me, Daz, and Chris were with you. Uh, yeah, it, it, didn't happen, it, it didn't happen, lads. It didn't happen. There you go. <laughs> oh, we lost Chris again. Um, but I think he's gonna try. I think you've just seen the message, he's gonna try. Um, so hopefully, we'll have him back on. But look, great to have you on, boys. Uh, look, since the last conversation, as Josh has just said, lots to talk about. Um, Newcastle are in a very, very different position right now. And look, we'll, um, well, just just because I like looking at it, because it's just a lot more pleasing to look at if we have a look at this uh, um, current table right now. So uh, a lot better. I think we must have been in about 10th position the last time we were having this conversation. And now in sixth place, um, you've got Man United in 50, but uh, on 50 points, but in seventh, West Ham um, in eighth. And um, yeah, we're uh, we're looking at the top of that European pack. We look like we're we're up there and um, in a great position. And, and just to add to that, um, we went and get Tottenham Hotspur an absolute smashing. Um, what a great great game! And uh, look, I want to get your thoughts on on the game. So let me know your th- thoughts and feelings. Um, we'll go around the table for this one. I've got some individual questions for you that I'm going to throw at you boys over the course of this show. But the first question that links to the Tottenham game um, is about one man. It's about this man. Alexander Izak, our top scorer, um, the absolute ice-cold killer that he is. And my question to you boys is, uh, is this... Is Alexander Izak the best striker in the Premier League right now? Let's start from Josh and work our way around uh, back to me. So, Josh, what are your thoughts, mate, of the Tottenham game and Alexander Izak? The Tottenham game overall, mate. I've got to be honest, actually, before the game, I'm not going to lie, lads. I, I seem to be a little bit of, um, not the majority here, but I actually wasn't that confident going into the game. I've seen many lads saying, oh, Newcastle, you know, it's in James's Park. We are going to batter Spurs here. But for me personally, you know, I'm looking at Spurs' lineup: Udogi, Pedro Poro, two fantastic fullbacks for Spurs this season. Even Van der Ven, who, I mean, we know what happened at St. James's Park, but he's been outstanding for Spurs this season. The likes of Hyunmin Son, uh, James Madison, even Vicario and Goal, these have been very good players. So I was 
you know, kind of worried. But the game overall, we were absolutely fantastic. I think them two goals in quick succession, it kind of uh, it alluded to that we were going to win that game overall. The momentum was very, very good. The atmosphere for what we've kind of lacked this season was very good at, uh, in St. James's Park as well. I think we just blew them away. Tactically, overall, it was a fantastic game, lads. But on to the second question for me, lads. I, you can call us biased, whatever you want. I'm 110% biased. Isak is the best striker in the Premier League right now. Of course, the main one we all know uh, it is Erlen Haaland. That would have been the competitor to Alexander Isak. When you look at the two, Erlen Haaland's on 20 goals, I believe it is. Alexander Isak's on 17. The comparison between what the two had to go through this season is unbelievable. Not only has Isak actually missed more games through injury, but Isak's been playing in an injury-ridden team. You know, the service hasn't been there. And when it has been there, the likes of Jacob Murphy on the wing, you know, Sean Longstaff with a broken foot, Erlen Haaland's working with arguably the best Premier League midfielder of all time, getting service off Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Ford and Rodri, Bernardo Silva, you know, the list goes on, lads. So, in a way... Look, Holland probably, I think he is the better goal scorer, let's say that. Of course, he's got that service and all that sort of stuff around him. He's an all-round player, though. I mean, Isak is, he is double the player that Erlen Holland is. You don't see Holland going down away at Goodison Park and turning James Tarkowski and Michael Keane inside out like Isak did. That elegance he's got on the ball, honestly. Holland could never replicate anything like that. So, call us bias, call us whatever you want. Isak is the best uh, striker in the Premier League for me, 110%. Love it, love it, love it. You know what, boys? I love the positivity already. Great to <laughs> great to have this positivity about Newcastle United. I want more of it. Uh, Specs, talk to me. I know you've just been on hammering uh, on Saeed's channel, hammering um, uh, Pat, the, the the Spurs fan. Uh, it's got to feel good, surely. Got to feel good. This absolutely. I had a beautiful weekend. It was an early kickoff. I'm not really an early guy, and I was hangover. I was tired. Um, before the game, I wasn't that optimistic, I'll be honest. When I saw our starting lineup and I saw theirs, I said, ah, it's going to be a long day. And then lo and behold, Eddie Howe got it right. Angie's pretty obvious and stubborn, put him on the counter. Happy days. On to Alexander Isaac. And this is why I get onto these other guys on these other, other shows because I've been saying for the last few weeks now that. Alexander Isaac right now is the best striker right now in the Prem. Just at this moment in time, or form or whatever you want to call it. Some people are like, mm, no. I'm like, what do you mean, mm, no? It's Isaac. There is no argument about it. And now, everywhere I see, it, everyone's messaging me, give us Isaac. Yeah, give us Isaac. How much you want for Isaac? And I'm like, people are talking about Newcastle as if no disrespect to the other teams, as if we're like, we just came up or something and they got a gym and they're talking like with some little guys. I'm like, I, I calm down, like, he's a ain't guy nowhere. Let's just keep it real. And if it is going to be a twist where he could go somewhere, it has to be one of the big ones in Europe, i.e. a Real Madrid of that kind of calibre. So when you hear the likes of Spurs talking about Isaac, I'm like, why would he want to go there? Like, let's keep it real. Isaac is the real gunman. He's on fire, and I'm all for it, man. Absolutely buzzing. Uh, I have to say, um, <clears throat> Specs, I um, I watched your uh, your TikTok of your watch along, and uh, I was howling, absolutely howling. Uh, if anyone hasn't watched uh, Specs' <laughs> his, his TikTok reaction to when the fourth goal goes in when Shaw scores, honestly, <laughs> it's brilliant. Just, just hearing, you never quite. I never ever heard. Uh, maybe people have, but never heard uh, someone react to that Shaw goal with "fuck off." And he just goes into an absolute rant about every other team question Newcastle yeah. United. I absolutely loved it, mate. It was top stuff. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. To, no, to be honest, like I, I can't help it, no, Like I'm just passionate. I just love Newcastle, bro. Like. Oh, honestly, like I get goosebumps. I just love the club, and obviously, people get at me. You get me, and then I, in a bantish way, but that goal would just sealed it for me. Like, you get me, like shut the f up, and I was just, it was just happy days, man. Because to be honest, surprisingly, I was disappointed to be only won by four 0 It could have been seven. In, in, in all honesty, so it just shows you how well we played and how well Eddie got it right. So yeah, man, all good, all good. Right, good stuff, Johnny. 
Look, uh, I you were there Saturday. Yeah, yeah I was there. Like, I was there how, how did it feel being in the stadium? You you you've you've been lucky enough to experience some some really good results, some top results this season um, for Newcastle United um, in that stadium, St James's Park. How did it feel to be there to experience that type of performance? And again, that question there that Daz has put up on the screen. Alexander Isak, is he the best in the Premier League for you right now? And and look, some people are in the in the comments are talking about Erlen Haaland. You know, uh, is he better than him in your opinion? What, what what are your thoughts, mate? I should just say good day, everybody. Um, after that uh, performance on uh, Saturday, <laughs> um, no, I'll start with I'll start with the uh, being in uh, being in the stadium. Firstly, absolutely incredible. I think Lisa mentioned it in, in the comments that. The atmosphere was absolutely outstanding for an early kickoff, and you know, I think the early kickoff, I expect, says it's a bit like you've got to try and get yourself ready for it. You know, a three o'clock game, you've got you've had a few drinks, you've had a few hours of being up in the day. So, was it being a half twelve kickoff on a West Ham was an unbelievable game towards the end, but the atmosphere only kind of went up a notch when we made it three two and we pushed over the line. But it was exceptional. But you have to have a performance out there to match it, so we as a fan base can really you know, give the players everything going forward. And it was, it was an absolute battering, if I'm being honest. You know, Spurs had little moments in the first 10, 15 minutes, but again, Dubravka hasn't had to make a save really until the 50th minute, and if we're being, if we're being honest. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll go back to the exact question in one second. What I will say is tactically, I think that's an Eddie Howe's top three performances as Newcastle United manager, in my opinion, because... To go man to man and go, my 11 are better than your 11, essentially, Ange. I'm going to go for it. And this is a Tottenham team that were in good form, let's be honest. I know they had the odd hiccup at Fulham away, but that is a tough Tottenham team. It's a bit more, it's a bit more um, fearful when you look at the Tottenham team from last season, bar Harry Kane, let's be honest. So, really, really impressive. But Alexander Izak, for me, Erling Haaland's the best. Premier League striker at this moment in time in terms of if you're looking at all the strikers and you go right there's all the strikers in the Premier League who's the best Erling Haaland is the best but right now on form Alexander Isak is the best Premier League striker for me people will probably people down in Birmingham will maybe say that Ollie Watkins deserves an honourable mention but if you put Ollie Watkins and Alexander Isak inside I'm sorry Villa fans Isak is just far far superior far far superior uh, I think it's the fact that He's so cold in the big, big moments, is Isaac. And I think for me, I think the goals that he scored, particularly the, the, the second goal, because Van der Ven, yes, he's got the pace, but he's got so much time to make a decision of where he's going to put that ball in terms of putting in the back of the net. And times he's run to affection in his own half. Really, really good performance from Alexander Isaac. I think people are going, oh, we, we can't, we can't get rid of them. If Newcastle United have to sell him for whatever reason, and I don't know this for a fact, £130 million is where you start the conversation. If, let's be honest, we've paid 60, 65 million. £130 million is where you have to start the conversation. And if they don't want a conversation, then that's, that's their problem because he's that good and everybody wants that good of a striker. Yeah, definitely. A lot. I don't even want to, Daz, I don't even want to think about so we talked about this at the weekend. You don't want to think about selling Alexander Isak. We don't even want to yeah. put a price on him. Um, but look, just for for you, is he is he the best out there? And I make it even more very specific. Like, is he better? Is he an overall better striker than Haaland? We know Haaland's a big goal scorer. He scores crazy amounts of goals. But overall, in your opinion, is he an overall better striker from what you've seen of him? Um, since he's come to the Premier League and joined Newcastle United? First of all, 130 million, forget it. No way, uh, Johnny. I, no, I don't think we, we shouldn't even be considering an, any. No, never mind. Up. No, no sale. <laughs> we're, not, we're not selling. We're the same, 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 same with Bruno. I'm not, I'm not selling any of them. None of them are allowed to go. As I get, as I seem to get redder and redder as the sun goes down here, it, it's just it's just the sun and the, the, the clash, the contrast. Uh, but. Um, uh, yeah, no, not for sale. Uh, as uh, with a, a lot of our, our our players, is is he better? I think Jimmy makes a good good point here. Uh, in Holland is like Cheer, uh, uh, Isaac is like Henri. Uh, two amazing strikers, but totally different. Uh, for me, uh, like 
I was just in awe, and uh, Josh pointed back to it with that game last year against Everton, where he, he waltzed through everyone and set up that that goal. Uh, that was absolutely amazing, and he's 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 con- he's uh, continued on from there. That that was his that was his turning point to, uh, of of kind to highlight what he can do. Uh, and the, the performance against Spurs what was absolutely amazing from 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 uh, the the whole team, uh, even the, the ball over the top from Bruno, uh, and just just yeah sitting down Van der Ven on, on his arse and Gordon following up a couple of seconds later with doing the same. Uh, it's just it was just a, a joke really. Uh, but is he is he the, the best? You know, Holland isn't having the greatest of, of seasons. He's still he's still probably winning the Golden Boot. Uh, he's on, on twenty, but uh, um, he, had, he he's probably number one, and Isaac is number two. But totally different type, types of players. Um, uh, but not for sale uh, is what uh, I say on on all of our key players. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I'm I'm one hundred percent for me. I think he's a better all-round striker than um, than Erling Haaland. Um, I do. I think he can. He is the complete striker. He can do everything. He can hold up a board. He's good in the air. Um, he can run into the channels. And technically, very very good on the ball. His dribbling skills are, are, are fantastic. Um, and and he's got the ability to finish. Like we said, he's he's ice cold in front of goal. Um, there's been question marks from Man City fans about Haaland's link up play and his in his work outside of the box not being quite good enough. And for me, um, Alexander Isak can do that in abundance. And when your goals, when your goals are drying up, like Haaland's have at times this season, um, you then got to look at yourself and go, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do to help the team? Alexander Isak shows that he can link play, he can create moments um, to help other players do the best that they can do. And for me, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, like, he offers so much more. Um, and I just think, yeah, I think he's, a, he's an all-round better striker, obviously. Um, we, we need to see him fit. We need to see him playing regular. But I believe that moving on after this season, we, we'll get to see that. And I think we, we haven't even touched the surface of how good Alexander Isak is yet, which is the, the, the frightening thing and the exciting thing about it all. But... Um, no, great points as well, and uh, um, I'm sure we'll be coming back to that conversation. Uh, so many in the chat as well. Um, Chris is in the chat as well. I know he's in, into hasn't uh, uh, made it tonight, but um, he's in the chat with comments and questions and and talking in there. So it's so a great to have you in there as well, Chris. But um, uh, want to give a shout out to the sponsors now before we get to our next point. Exactly. Yeah, no, because it's something different from, from our uh, one of our sponsors in the, the Radiator Shed. Radiator Russ. Radiator Russ, we've been talking to for a while. Uh, you, know, you might notice a new little ro- logo on this side, the, the gold radiator, but he also has a little video. So watch this. It's only about 20 seconds. So check this out. Where to go for all your radiator needs, the radiatorshed.com. Check out the website for the latest and greatest. And contact Russ. He will sort you out. He will. Top man. Uh, uh, getting back to Newcastle United talk, um, I want to ask, oh, look, considering you're down that way, Specs, you must speak to Tottenham fans all the time. So I'm going to come spe- like very specifically to you on this question. And... Tottenham have been bigged up this season. They've been made out there, this this top team that are playing at the top end of football and they're going to be back in the Champions League and they're going to be up there with Ange Ball and all the rest of it. However, we put them to the sword on Saturday, which got me thinking about this particular question. And the question is this. Based on what we did last season in comparison to what they did this season, were we a better team than Spurs? at the same stage, 32 games in last season, in your opinion? So you're talking about literally at this stage? Yeah. Week 32, yeah? Game week 32, yeah? If I can remember, 
I'm sure when we're looking kind of tired ish and one or two injuries around this, around this time last season, where we kind of just got it over the line and for the few bumps and scratches, you know, like against like the Villa, for example, away. And I'm sure, because it for me, last season it felt like at this stage, we were literally just trying to get it over the line up until that Leicester game. Do you remember that? that, that I think it was nil nil that got us in the Champions League. And if I'm, if I'm sure, I'm sure Leicester could have scored right at the end to kind of prolong that. Do you get what I'm saying? And I, I genuinely believe if we had three more games to go in that in that season, like, oh, like, like, let's, let's say there's three extra games, yeah. I genuinely believe Liverpool could have caught us up because I think we were getting tired by that point. I really do. So in terms of just talking about this like game for week 32 in that sense, um, I, I, I wouldn't say we were necessarily better from what I can remember. If you turn out overall, then yeah, I think Newcastle, I think we, have, we, we, we would have had a better season than even Villa and even um, um, Spurs. But in those terms of that actual week base like now, from what I remember, because it's gone way back now, I just feel like we were starting to look a bit you know what I mean? Like looking a bit tired, like where we're just about putting our last energy into in, into that push for the top four, from what I remember. It's an interesting one. Um, I don't know, Johnny, Josh, I don't know if you've got an opinion on, on, on this, but I just thought it was a really interesting conversation, you know, just with regards to how much Tottenham have been bigged up this season with Ange Ball and all the rest of it, you know, and I'm, I'm like Specs. I'm trying to think back to last season the way we were playing. I think around this time we went on a little bit of a run. It was in April where Callum Wilson went on his massive goal, goal kind of um, splurge. And he, I think he was like top scorer of that month. He was getting braces all over the place. Um, like Johnny, I'll come to you. What, what, what are your thoughts from from seeing what we did last season to see what Tottenham were doing? Like, do you think Newcastle performed better than Tottenham have at this stage last year? Like. From, from seasons gone? I think it's a difficult one. I think it's a really good question because Spurs have still got to play like three very, very tough teams. They're still going to play the top three. Where Newcastle at this stage at stage of the season, we had to play Arsenal in terms of last season, in terms of like teams that were really fighting for the title. Um, I, I think we are a better team than what Spurs were now. And I, there's a couple of reasons for it. I think we look a lot more stronger in terms of the midfield looks a lot stronger in terms of what Spurs in midfield, I thought they were all over the place on Saturday in particular. I don't think there's much in it with the defence, if I'm honest. I know Spurs had a bad day on on uh, on Saturday, but if you just if you if you take Saturday out of the equation, if you knew match Newcastle's best defence in terms of Burn, Botman, Shaw and Trippier, and you put Tottenham's best centre, uh, best defence probably of Poro, Udogi as your full backs and Van der Ven, um and I'm trying to think off the top of my head, Romero, sorry. I would say you could probably argue two, two, two for each. So I don't mm -hmm. think there's much in it there. Um, going forward, Spurs don't have what they had last season with Harry Kane, but we have that with Isaac. And I think going from the wings, you know, Gordon's playing exceptional right now. Well, obviously it was last season. So you're looking, it was Joe Linton, who was kind of like a makeshift left winger. Um, and Almiron, you could argue Spurs maybe are a bit stronger in terms of the wide areas if you look at Newcastle's team last year. So there's not much in it, but I just I just feel with Newcastle when they won last year around about this time against the likes of Spurs, Southampton, Forest, you know, there wasn't many games you're going, oh, we've scraped it, oh, we've done this, oh, we've done that. We were battering teams, we battered West Ham, we went to Brentford and we, you know, we dominated the second half. I know we were poor first half, but we dominated the second half. We were going to places and getting the job done. Where Spurs, they are apart from the Villa game, really, where they played really well. They're not exactly going. To, they're not exactly going to places and winning every week. You know, they lost to Fulham quite easily. Let's be honest. Where I think we're in a strong. We were in a stronger position this time last year, but it is such a difficult one because it's twelve months ago and football seems like a lifetime. So, um, but yeah, very. It's it's, it's an interesting one, but. I, I don't think Spurs will finish in the top four after watching them on Saturday. I just think with the, the, you've got they've still got to play Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, and Chelsea. Now they're not getting they're not getting full points from that. They, they should be Burnley and Sheffield United. But yeah, interesting. <laughs> licking, licking his lips. 
<laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just crazy when you put it like that. Like when you say all those picture, all those picture lists, it's like they've got a tough one. They've got a tough one. Tough running. Definitely. Look, I, I, I've, I've, I've had a look at it. Um, obviously, this is the league now. We had up a second ago. Tottenham, 60 points after 32 games in fifth position. Um, you know, 65 goals, 49 conceded. Um, in comparison to that, if I take that off the screen for a second, um, this was Newcastle United. Um, so Newcastle United were third in the Premier League. Uh, 17 wins, scored 58, not as many, but conceded far less in 26 with 62 points at that at that point in time. So in terms of performance and position, we were performing better the, the, than Spurs uh, were at this stage last season. And and as you said, Specs, we, we went on. Yes, we lost to the likes of Villa and we kind of like nudged over the line, but we went on and we, we beat the likes of uh, Everton at their place, um, you know, we, we we got points. It was a massive win against Brighton at St James's Park. We did manage to get those those big results to get us over the line. And of course, how how can we not forget that absolute smashing against Spurs last season at St James's Park yeah. as well? So we, we did we did you know we we were performing better at that stage, and it was just interesting to have a look at that. But Josh, Daz, I've got a different question for you. Um, we've just looked at the league table. Um, sixth spot. Are we now favourites for sixth spot? And a little additional question there. Can we get fifth spot? Is Champions League potentially, if it's five places, is fifth spot up for grabs in your opinion? So, Josh, I'll come to you. Daz, I'll come to you afterwards. What are you thinking? <sighs> Do you know what it is? I mean, first of all, I remember the last time we were on the show, we were sitting mid-table. This wasn't in our wildest dreams. And so a little bit of a, a nice little run from the club at the minute. But I believe fifth is a little bit too far for Newcastle. Now, I believe that because although Spurs, and I do believe they, they will drop the fifth and Aston Villa will get fourth. They have got some very, very hard fixtures. I don't believe they're going to lose all four. I mean, you can't go on a run like that, nevertheless, of what the performance will be. Now, I've got some very hard ones, of course, as, as someone said before. Chelsea, uh, Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal, I believe it is. Very, very hard games. But I just believe it's it's little too late for Newcastle. I mean, we we've, we know what's happened uh, all the way through the season. Some results were maybe should have got the three points in, of course. Everton at home, we really should have got the three points there. That could have been a major difference to getting fifth spot. But I believe fifth spot is just a little too far for Newcastle at this point in the season. Europa League, I'll, I'll happily take that. But um, six, uh, oh, yeah, six, sorry. I believe Newcastle will get it. Although Man United have got some pretty easy fixtures coming up. They've got the likes of Burning, Sheffield United, both at home in the space of three days. And all that fixture congestion isn't the, the most suitable for them. But still, you know, you should be beating both teams at home, of course. We've got Burnley away and Sheffield United at home as well. We've got some pretty favourable fixtures coming up. Uh, that Man United game for me, I'm just going to say that. I think that will be the decider. We've got to go to Old Trafford and get them vital three points against what is our biggest competitor. So I believe Newcastle... I think we are the, you know, it's so, in these sort of situations, right, I would back Newcastle to get six every day of the week, but you just know what Man United's like. They'll turn up and get battered for 90 minutes and go natural goes and gets a goal in the last minute and somehow they're the finish above. But I will say Newcastle are favourites to get that sixth spot and I do believe we will as well. Yeah, well, we're in the, we're in the, we're in the front seat at the moment. We're, we're sixth place. I personally didn't think we'd be there at this point just because... Um, of the form and the way we're playing, the injuries, all the rest of it. But Daz, um, six six spot. Are, are we now favourites for that spot? Looking at our fixtures, our run up to the end of the season, albeit we play against Man United, as as Josh said. But you know, we talked about this on Saturday. Uh, you've had a we did. Of, you've had a couple of days to think about it now and let it sink in. Like, it, 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 is your mind changed with regard to fifth spot? Is it a possibility? Is it a step too far? As Josh said, what are you thinking? Well, Nobby Clark is really getting value for money for that super chat with this question. I really get, get, get two shows out of it. But uh, yeah, my answer on on, uh, on Saturday night was exactly the same as Josh. I think we're just going to run out of road uh, in, in getting fifth spot. But I think we're we're, we're definitely going to get sixth spot. I, I'm I'm not not worried about that at all. I think we're going to get sixth spot. Uh, I think we're going to finish ahead of of Man United. I think we'll all come down to that game on the fifteenth of of May for that kind of. 
the 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 who, who's going to finish ahead of each other there. Uh, so um, I just uh, that would be interesting how that how that plays out. Uh, but yeah, we're going to run out of road, and then all the permutations linked to the European Games and FA Cup and who's going to qualify and and the coefficient and blah blah blah, all that mixture as to where we what European competition we will reside in then. It won't be the Champions League, I don't think, because uh, we won't get fifth. So it'll, I imagine it'll either be the Europa, but if the coefficient works out, uh, it could even be the conference. But either way, once we get Europe, uh, happy days. Yeah, definitely. I did say any type of Europe would take it. Um, I'm not I'm not going to be in a position to to argue which one I'd want now. As long as we get it, uh, I think that's, uh, that's key. And look, I have to say... Um, Linking to that European conversation, look, I'll come back round to a, another question to you, Johnny. Um, and the question before is, you do, I think I think uh, jo- Johnny wanted to say something on this topic. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, it's just, it was just, it was just the, it was a really good point actually about what you mentioned about um, the obviously the coefficient at the minute that in terms of the stats, it's saying that well, it's about a sixty percent chance that an English team will get another spot. They're basically saying that. By Leverkusen are expected to beat West Ham, which there's no, I don't think we all argue, will not argue against that. Arsenal by Munich is very much a flip of a coin. I think you'd argue by a slight favourite, particularly the fact they're at home and Arsenal come back of obviously a damaging defeat at Villa. I, I, it, it, they're still, even with that, they're still saying that because that they believe that Manchester City will win the Champions League and you know Villa have got a chance of winning the Conference League. Yeah. They, they think that it's still probably going to be in England's hands in terms of the extra play. So it's it's a really interesting because I don't think we will finish fifth. I think I'll agree with Josh. I just think it's a bit just too far our reach. Mm-hmm. But I look at those four games, I'm thinking, you know, like four big games. Like if they just say let's just say they just beat Sheffield United and Burnley, that's sixty six. Newcastle have to win all their games basically. Mm. And or win one and maybe get a point uh, win or win five and get and draw one of them. Maybe draw at Old Trafford, for example. Possibly. Who knows? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we yeah we're, we're we are really kind of watching those German teams. We, we're, we're hoping the the German teams don't do as well, uh, and then they, it it pushes us up there the rankings. There seems to be the ones to, to watch from articles I've read uh, from uh, Newcastle World and the Gazette. Really, is where, where I'm getting that from. Definitely. Well, th- th- this is this is kind of how it looks, lads, and it, it might be a little bit more difficult to see um, from you can see on the screen, but. Um, it looks to the if you can see right at the top of the screen, it's got the um, the highest um, projected points that, that teams can get, um, and it looks like um, Newcastle United's highest max points is sixty eight. So if you're say if what you're saying is right, Johnny, that you know Tottenham do as expected beat Burnley and Sheffield United, you know that means there's only like a, a two point squeeze really in order to be able to make that. Like you said, we'd have to go and win pretty much every game, which is still possible. We our fixtures are favourable. We could go and win every single one of our remaining games and be on sit on sixty eight points. But this is kind of how it looks at this moment in time. In that, um, you know, Man United have similar fixtures as uh, I think Josh mentioned. Sheffield United, Burnley, Palace are all same fixtures as us. They have to play Brighton as well, as do we. So we're in a similar boat there. Um, you know, you look at West Ham, they've still got to play Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City. You've got to think that they're going to drop a significant amount of points in those remaining games and they've played a game more than us. Um, Question for you boys, looking at this screen here, because I've, there's one team I've not talked about that played last night, and that's Chelsea. And in your opinion, Specs, I'll come to you first. Obviously, a massive win for Chelsea last night. Absolutely smashed Everton, which I'm not going to complain about. I'm not going to complain <laughs> about it. I should, but I'm not. Um, sorry, Lisa. Um, but uh, you look at Chelsea, Chelsea can still finish on the same amount of points as us. And They've got two games. No, sorry, they've got a game in hand now on us, obviously, because they played that Everton game last night. So, you know, they've got to still play Arsenal, albeit Villa, Spurs, West Ham, Brighton. So they've got tough games. But a Chelsea in this mix now for European competition, because albeit with with the league standing right now, with their game in hand on us, if they win it, whoever it's against. They're on the same points as is, albeit we're, we've got a better goal difference. Are they in the conversation? Look, man, 
as much as inconsistent and stinky Chelsea have been, <laughs> and I'm glad you brought that up anyway, because while he was talking, I was thinking, don't forget about Chelsea, yeah. but you know the stuff, so you brought it up. I've been, I've been kind of keeping an eye on them for the last few weeks, because as you said, they've always had a game in hand or two, and um, they're inconsistent. It's weird. They play Sheffield United, literally stunk the place out, and then Everton, yeah, Everton are not so great. And it makes you wonder how the hell we didn't beat them. It's beyond me. And then Chelsea going bad them 6-0. And I was so irritated with Everton. I was like, please, at least get a draw. Because I genuinely believe in the conversation, at least, of course Chelsea are in the conversation. Don't get it twisted. Yes, Newcastle can go on a little run. But at the same time, we know Newcastle has got it in us to maybe drop two points or get that odd um that odd loss and don't don't get it twisted guys to palace ain't gonna be give me a foregone conclusion because I, I i can feel the spirit around everyone is like yep we go palace and and i'm like no bruv it don't work like that and this is both and this was before um palace played liverpool and when we do go to palace more time it doesn't really seem to go to plans. Either we draw or it's just, it's just a stinky day. So, yeah, Chelsea are in the mix. They've got momentum. If they never had Cole Palmer, they will be in a relegation battle. Facts. So, yeah, Chelsea are in the conversation. May United are weird. They're in the conversation still. I'm not so sure about West Ham, but if Newcastle can just get a little run, and I think we've got momentum now, Chelsea will have momentum, but they're inconsistent. But, yeah, um, so quickly, on the fifth spot one, um, I, I wouldn't put it past us completely, but I can't see it happening. But I wouldn't put it past us. You never know. Miracles can happen. But we just have to just, like, stay calm, stay focused, and just hopefully our momentum will bring us through and don't watch anyone else just do our job. And then we should be all right. But, yeah, sixth spot for me, I think it's ours, to be honest, overall. I think it is ours. Generally, I do. But Chelsea are in the mix. Specs. Specs, if we get fifth spot, yeah. and that's a Champions League spot, oh, and, of Tottenham, and Tottenham finish sixth, you are going to have to move house. You're going to have to yeah. leave. There's no yeah. way no Tottenham fan is going to allow you to <laughs> stay where you're staying right now. You've got no chance. <laughs> hey, bro. I'll, I'll have I'll, I'll need twenty four hour protection, mate. Come on, <laughs> you know like trust me, bro. Like it's 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 peak, brother. Like this. Can you imagine that? Wow, I couldn't show my face. No way. I I'd have to come out at nights only with the hoodie on. Get me like a real Tottenham man. Just get me like an old key because all blacked out as well. Because it's not yeah, it's crazy. And imagine, like you said, it was a Champions League. But what would they ask all of you lot is? Um, I'm glad you said that as well. If Newcastle managed to finish fifth, this is safe for fantasy purposes. And then the Champions League spot got given to us towards the end of the season. Would you think that was a more exciting time to qualify for the Champions League than it was for the first time in how many years? Probably before Josh was born last season. That's a great question. Well, that's a different question, isn't it? Um, I think it's so unexpected. Huh? That that that's uh, you'd you'd be just be in shock for at least a week after it. Um, yeah. It'd be crazy. It, it, it'd be. Cra I think it was unexpected in the beginning of last season, but we had time to believe over the course of the last season. But to finish fifth, and it, if it did happen, and a Champions League spot, you almost it would take time for it to marinate because they'll be like, "What the f just happened?" You get know what I'm saying? It was tenth a few weeks ago, and and la and quickly, lastly. For all those, everyone got their own opinions, but for all those guys, and I feel like swearing, but I won't swear, that was like, Eddie Howe out, no specs, I'm not having it. Eddie Howe out today, we beat Fulham. No, I still want him out. Back to Spurs, I've not heard nobody. They've gone quiet. Now Eddie Howe's a genius. He got it tactically right. Where's all the Eddie Howe out trade? Where are you? Come on, are you still Eddie Howe out? They've gone quiet, man. Stick to the energy. Stick to the same energy, man. Yeah, I love it. Well, I'm, I, I hear it. Josh, we'll come to you on Spex's question because that, that's a 
That's an interesting one. Would would if we were to finish fifth and get Champions League, would that trump us finishing fourth last season and getting Champions League? Do you know what, lads? I think that that's such a, a hard and great question at the same time yeah. because you you can look at it from so many different aspects. I mean, I'm, I'm more persuaded without barely any thought, uh, more persuading towards the last season because, you know, you go from relegation battle in a Champions League football, yeah. who on earth expected that? Uh, of course, uh, all of that sort of stuff, like the Carabao Cup final, battering teams, uh, drawn 3-3 with Man City, all that sort of stuff kind of adds to it as well. But I mean, it, I'm not dis going to discredit if we did get fifth this season. I mean, what an achievement that would be. Look like we're down and out uh, a fair few months ago, even a few weeks ago as well. Look like we're going to settle for maybe Conference League at best. So imagine Champions League this season, it would be fantastic. But I'm just going to say last season, it was just so magical, the, the hype and the aura around the club, everything, Carabao Cup final, like I said, it's something like I'd never seen before in my life, uh, of course, so I am just going to say last season, just because it was a once in a, in a lifetime thing to experience because of what we had the season prior. I'm going to stick with you, Josh, because I've got a question for you. If we get European football, no matter what European football it is, does Bruno stay at Newcastle United? Do you know I, can the, the, I can see the <laughs> the reaction on his face. So, oh my God, what a do, question. Do you know what it is? I, I could be a mug for saying this, but I really do believe he does. Now, this this isn't, by the way, an, an Arsenal team who was two years into the rebuild. It's not, oh, we might get Champions League football, oh, we might get Europa League. This Newcastle United rebuild, so to speak, takeover, it's something which has never been seen before. And it's something that is completely different to any sort of rebuild that's, you know, not just gain the wealth that we had. It's it's completely different. Bruno and Isak and all them sorts of players, even Botman, who was in that sort of equation a while ago, they know what they've signed up for. They knew that we obviously probably weren't going to get Champions League in the second season. That would have come way before their th uh, thoughts so I believe they will stay you, you, they know that it was kind of a, a, bl a bump in the road so to speak all the injuries all that sort of stuff they are human as well I don't believe this early into their rebuild into their Newcastle United careers they are going to jump ship now they might do and it might look like an absolute mug but still I don't believe they will Bruno knows he's absolutely adored by the fans here and that is something money can't buy the, the work he puts and he knows genuinely how much he is adored here so I, I don't think he will. And that, that's on hope as well, by the way. That's not any, any inside information. That's on pure hope. I hope he does stay. And I genuinely, I do believe he will stay as well. I think he absolutely adores the club. Love it. Josh, I have a follow-up question. If we were to get the band back together, and I know you might have some inside information on this one, but this man, would you take him back? ASM, who you've been chatting to today? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it is? I'd, I'd take him back every day of the week. Sentimentality is getting over his there. I know he was injured. I know he was inconsistent. I know he didn't track back when he got the ball took off him. But I'm taking him back every day of the week, man. Honestly, my first cult hero. Every day of the week, he's coming back. And clip that and send his ASM. <laughs> Do you, know what it is? Do you know what it is? I replied back to that comment saying you're coming one day and he completely blanked us. So I think that's answer. <laughs> 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 and he's in the chat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it pop up. You watch it pop up. Uh, Johnny, I've got a question for you. Um, another man who was absolutely on fire yesterday, uh, not yesterday, at the weekend. Um, I'm going to use your picture, Daz. This man, Anthony Gordon. Um, what another superb performance from him and um i just wanted to add uh this stat came out i think it might have been yesterday and people have been talking about it today and it's this most goals created actions in europe's top five leagues anthony gordon joined with another superb player in florian Wurtz as well um he's just being a huge part of what we're doing in terms of creation in terms of his work ethic in terms of his output this season um, so my question is to you, what is Anthony Gordon ceiling? How far can this guy go? 23 years old he is, England international, Newcastle United's left or right winger, whichever one you want to play among, because it don't really matter right at the moment. <laughs> What's his ceiling, mate? How good is he? Well, if you call it an Everton fan, he was a £40 million flop, isn't he? That's what he was going to be. Um, mm. No, in, in all seriousness... <laughs> no, I think I, I've, I've always 
wanted him to do well. Like I always remember going, I remember going to Man City away last year, and I thought, "Ooh, I don't know about this." And I, maybe it's unfair to judge on a Man City away, but you just want to see something from him that you think, "Well, can we grasp onto it going forward?" And then he got his chance at Villa away last year, Southampton at home, and we're thinking, "Oh, this is maybe taking a little bit longer than we thought." But I always say that goal against Chelsea at the last game of the season of last season, I think changed everything for him. I think it changed his mindset. I think it changed his game altogether because he knew that if he didn't perform, he was going to be out that team and he wasn't going to get back in because the, he had players around him that were wanting that shirt, wanting that position. In terms of the actual question itself about what's his ceiling, it can be anything it want, he wants it to be. And I, and I, and I look at the, the, the amount of chances he creates, the amount of goals he scored this season, the tracking back which for me you almost forget that a winger has to do that sort of work he has to track back he has to do the hard yards and it's been so many times where he's probably been absolutely shattered because he's putting in pretty much 90 percent sprints all the time because that's what eddie howe wants in his team um you forget about the hard yards and that, and that type of work but he could he could do whatever he wants he could he could get 50 odd caps easily for england he's he's 23 and the problem, the only reason I'm only saying 50 England caps is because there's just so many good players. I saw Cole Palmer yesterday, who was absolutely fantastic for Chelsea. Like, he really tore Everton to shreds, um, and Jordan Pickford in particular. Um, mm-hmm. But but he could he could do whatever he wanted to do. I think I just hope that his best years and his peak years at Newcastle, because if that's the case, I mean, you know, he's had one, let's, let, let's be honest, this is, I know he's had one full season at Everton, but that was a team that were, you know, in disarray and they still are a bit they are still a massive mess of it but he's just come with so much confidence and Newcastle fans have just allowed him and even the manager the management the players have just allowed him just to grow in terms of what he can be and what he can develop into and it's just been absolutely fantastic my and I I hate to say this in front of Josh my biggest bugbear with ASM is that with the amount of talent that he has goals and assists weren't backing it up he's got so much talent you know, like Sam and I interviewed him for, for our show last year and you could tell that the love was there. You could tell that he would love being there, but it was just not enough goals, not enough assists. Anthony Gordon is doing what ASM is doing with goals and assists and that's why he's getting all the plaudits and that's why it was the right decision to to sign him and to trust him and to, unfortunately, for Josh and a lot of Newcastle fans, even myself, letting ASM go because stats will say... It's an unbelievable bit of business, and he could go to the very, very top. Definitely. You ma- you mentioned uh, um, Jordan Pickford there, Johnny, but he's he's really a poor man's uh, Jonathan Greenwood to me. Uh, Jordan is Jordan Pickford, but uh, especially in that kind. one one you're good too, day, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, just yeah, what a flag. It's funny you should mention that actually because uh, you know, oh, still here, here, you know. here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Josh, yeah, you're right. Yes, yeah, yes, we, yes. we don't want to see that. We don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> just want to give a shout out as well to Tinder Nightum. Uh, and, and he's super chat. Cheers, Tinder Nightum. He says, past three or four seasons, we turn up in April and May. Away the lads. But then I see a few more comments as well. And one of them includes Tinder Nightum. And David Knight says, I'm still Eddie Howe out, and uh, Tendon Item says as well, still Eddie Howe out, to be, to be honest. It's more to do with games like Luton, Bournemouth, Everton, etc. We could have been in a better spot to get the top four, which which was what I expected pre-season, he says. Uh, interesting that. Uh, others are saying that that uh, what, uh, with all the injuries that Eddie Howe has, has done miracles this season to get us to be even in contention for, for Europe. So it's how, it's how you look at it, I guess. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's an interesting one. Like, I, yeah, I I I was I've 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 said it before. Around sort of December time, early January, I was very much you know expecting us to kick on, and we wasn't. And we weren't playing good football. There were some decisions that were questionable, and and I was saying Eddie Howe needs to evolve, otherwise his his managerial position is going to be under threat. Um. But as we kind of moved on, certainly into February time, um, early March, and having looked back at what he was having to deal with and seeing players when once be getting 100% fit and then seeing what they're able to produce, I kind of re- um, readjusted my thoughts on that and 
when you look back and what we had to go through, particularly November and December, that was that was a really, really difficult moment, especially when you throw Champions League football. It's all right for Villa. It's all right for West Ham. They've been able to, through those difficult moments of the season, although playing three games a week like us, they were playing far less a quality of opposition. And so you're able to change your team around. And bearing in mind, West Ham are at the bottom of the injury list. They've had hardly any injuries. So they've had all of their top players available all season. Okay? Villa have had some serious injuries, but again, not as many as Newcastle United and still been able to chop and change their team against lesser opposition. We've had to play the absolute best in Europe whilst playing in the uh, in, in the Premier League, whilst playing and getting to quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, playing against Man United, um, Chelsea and Man City. And then to, to go on and do a quarterfinal in the FA Cup as well, the amount of games that we've played this season, I think it was said that I think Bruno's already done a 50 game season this season. Like we've played a lot of football. And so it's made me rethink of all those things and go, actually, you know what? We've had to go through a real difficult moment this season. And now it for me, it's respect and admiration for Eddie Howe. He ain't going anywhere. He is in charge of Newcastle United. And I think the owners have always backed him. And I think a lot of fans are now are looking back and going, actually, yeah, fair play to him. Um, so, yeah, um, that, that's kind of where I, I stand on that. And look, um, it's going to be really interesting now he's getting players back because this question I've got for you, Daz, in particular, is that we got Tino Livramento back in, in contention. <clears throat> Great to see him come off the bench um, and not be out for any significant period of time. And there's obviously rumours about um, Kieran Trippier being back for the Crystal Palace game. So my question to you, Daz, is if both are fit, who comes into your starting eleven, Trippier or Tina? Well, yeah, uh, for, for me, I, I, I've been saying this uh, for a while now as well, that um, going into next season as well, I know you're asking about this season. Mm. Uh, I personally put, put put Tina with. I I, I think he, he's our right back going forward, and uh, Trippy is our is our, our our alternative. Or you're you're playing Tino on the as left back and having Trippy as right back. I know I know when 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 Trippier plays, everything goes through Trippier. He takes all the free kicks. He takes all the corners. He takes everything, uh, and he and he. he, he that brings me. We used to bring Miggy into play because they had a good uh, sync up, a, a good symmetry down that right wing. But Gordon is doing really, really doing really well on, on the corners. We don't have anyone to take free kicks yet. But when when, uh, when Tunali is back next, next season, uh, he he can take a free kick. So I, I think our reliance on Trippier is will 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 uh, dissolve a bit uh, and. Uh, uh, as I see, I'm absolutely massive super chat hit, hit, hitting the, the screen. So I'm going to stop there and uh, and and go to, to to this super chat. But uh, I I would I would bring myself. I bring in in, in Tino. But I think uh, Trippier has has a, a definite role to play and in, in a leadership position. But I think uh, going forward, I think Tino is is our is our, our man. Uh, and then. I want to go give a shout out to Do to Dominic. Thank you very much, Dominic, for for the massive super chat. Uh, Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it, that's that's blindsided me. I didn't even know what you're on. Yeah. I'm listening to you. I didn't even know. But Dominic, uh, wow. Thank you so much for your um, super chat. Much appreciated. Um, uh, Dominic, we know that you're a massive supporter of the channel and and, and have been for a long time. So, um, really, really do appreciate. Um, uh, you know your super chats and what you do, but please put in a question. Just put in something so <laughs> we can answer. This is what it's all about. But look, um, massive thank you to you, um, Dominic. Uh, do appreciate it. And look, we will be in touch uh, for sure. Um, uh, we will make sure that when you get over for a game, that that we're, that we're there to uh, there to be with you, and um, we'll maybe we'll organise it. You know, around next season's charity match when we win the we, we win the trophy back, but yeah, uh, that, that's a that's a conversation for for down the road. But um, <laughs> cheers, Dominic, top man. Um, but no, it's it, boys. I don't. I'm I'm it, open mic for you, boys. Trippier, Ortino. Like when when they're both fit and available, 
who are you going for? And, and it could be this season, but as Daz said, keep it in mind for next season. Well, what what are your thoughts uh, in that? Johnny, I'll come round to you to to Specs and then to Josh. What what are you thinking? Um, it, it, ooh, it's a tough one. I have to put out there, Emil Croft and Jacob Murphy played really well on Saturday. I just thought I'd throw that out there because I think yeah, um, they, 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 were, they were outstanding and not many people are talking about them. They're talk, we're talking about Isaac, Bruno, Gordon and rightly so, but they were they were, they were were brilliant on the weekend. Um, oh, it's a tough one. I would still probably edge it with Trippier and not just because he's crossing ability more than anything. But it's, it, I'm probably north point north north one percent less happy of Tino starting. That's how that's how well I rate him. I think I actually think Tino Livermento. If he if Tino Livermento played probably ten more games this season, I'd put him as a candidate for Player of the Season. He's barely put a foot wrong for Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Like it started with that game against Manchester City in the Carabao Cup, where he had Jack Grealish all night, yeah. didn't let him out his sight, and. I can't think of many bad games. Like he was robbed of a fantastic performance in Paris because of that decision at the end. He was brilliant against Wolves, deserved that goal. He came on for Trippier. Obviously, I haven't seen Trippier since then. But it was honestly, it, I, I've never seen a player come in and not play many games, but done unbelievably well in the in the games he has played. He reads the game so well. He's so intelligent, and I just think he is. He's been an absolute breath of fresh air coming in because there was a lot of question marks a lot of money for a player that's just done his ACL coming from the well, a relegated Southampton I know he didn't play many games but that, that's what the tag was I'm a massive fan of Tito Livermore I really really am but I, I, I do think that Trippier I think Trippier can give you one still one unbelievable season left I think he's got two years left on his contract if I'm right if I'm, if I'm, if I'm right I could be wrong on that one but I, I still think he can definitely give you at least one good season Trippier but in terms of right now I would still go with Trippier, but oh, honestly, Tina Livermore is the future for Newcastle. But I just think, you know, maybe play him at left back a couple of times as well because, you know, he can do a job on left back as well. We've seen that. We've seen the link up with Gordon down the left a couple of times this season when Burn hasn't been available or Burn's been uh, taken off for Tina. So, yeah, Hit, again, a bit like Anthony Gordon, Tina Livermore's ceiling's quite high as well. Just. One thing I want to say, say about Tino, and I said it the other night as well, just one thing I'd like to see him improve is, is his crossing. Because uh, mm-hmm. there's a few times he's had he's had a, he's, he's taken a cross, tried, tried to cross it, and it hasn't hit, hit the man. But I think that will come in time. He's just, everything else is outstanding. Tino. Definitely. Um, Specs, um, are, you, are you with Johnny? Are you, are you kind of just edging towards Trippier? Or, or, um, or are, you, are you thinking Tino? What, what are your thoughts? No, I'm hundred percent opposite from Johnny. Um, it, um, I, I fully fit Tino for a whole season, and I fully fit Trippier for a whole season. I'm going with Tino Livermore all effing day long, bro. Because from it's not my personal opinion of what I like to see. Um, I know um, you uh, alluded to um, what is it? Um, Dad's sorry, shocks said um. We'll see him improve on his crossing, which I agree with. But what he lacks for that, I don't mind because I like to see my fullbacks forming forward. And like, I get mad excited when I see him just run from our own 80 yard box and he can drive forward, go past players, and his crossing might be lacking, but he can pick out a pass, especially when he inverts into the middle. He can find a player, he can score a goal. And it looks like he can he can go forward and get back a lot of energy. So Trippier for me, obviously, his experience is I don't want to get it twisted. His experience, his leadership, there's been times when it has has been needed, and he's a big asset to us. But if I had a choice, if I had a choice, not by far, but a choice of who I prefer, what I find more exciting. I think yes, Trippier can score um, free kicks and he got good assists and his corners. And don't get it twisted. Dare I say, not all of his corners are on point. Sometimes he pisses me off. Don't get it twisted. But <laughs> that, like, if, we, if we're going to keep it real, I know we love our, our, our support our players, but there's a lot of times where Trippier pisses me off. I get pissed off with the short um, passes of the corners where I'm just like, just get it in the box. Um, but just on a preference level, not because Trippier's bad, obviously not. Like when we signed him, I was over the moon. Yeah. Top, top class, like top class. He's got another few years left in him. Left in him. But Tino, for me, they're both are fully fit. 
I'm picking Tino all effing day long, bro. All effing day long. Because what he does is, he's like an extra man almost to cause the opposition something more to think about. Because they know he, he can attack as well along with the others. That's, a, that's just my preference. That's all. Josh, what are your thoughts, mate? Honestly, that is, that's such a hard question. I know I don't know uh, the exact situation, but it's literally like choosing between two kids you've just given birth to. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they're both fantastic. What Kieran Trippi has done for her, what Tino's doing for her right now. I mean, he's literally like a cult hero already, you know, Tino every down the street on Northumberland Street. I'm guaranteed. I don't know if they're chanting at me, by the way, but I'm guaranteed. <laughs> I think they are. <laughs> no, but um, seriously, uh, actually, even with the lads speaking all that time, I, I still I haven't made my mind up on one. If you were to ask me for right this second, right now, for the next game, I probably would just say Kieran Trippier. Yeah, but for next season, even though, of course, we can't say in hindsight, I am going to say uh, Tino Rivermento will be the number one right back next season. But just for right now, if both are fully fit, bear in mind if I had the choice to, I would put Tino at left back and Trips right back. But I would take Kieran Trippier yeah, right back. Now, even a couple of weeks ago, I probably would have said Trippier nailed on because of his uh, corners, his free kicks, his leadership and his experience, all that sort of stuff. But we've seen against Spurs, you know, Anthony Gordon's corners, they were a lot better than what I've seen of Trippier this season. I mean, there's been a fair few times, even last season, for example, where Trippier's crosses, free kicks and corners died off uh, for a, a large amount of time and then they came back. This season, they've been OK, not so, uh, not the greatest they have been. But I will say Kieran Trippier just because... I think Miggy, well, of course, if Miggy was fit, if he was on the right-hand side, you need crosses coming in from the right-hand side to get on the likes of Alexander Isak. We all know Miggy, he can't use that right foot. He can't cross the ball in there. So if, if it's the likes of Jacob Murphy on the right, I probably would take Tino. But look, overall, uh, just for the, the, the crossing ability that he does have, of course, the free kicks if we do need one. I still would put Anthony Gordon on their corners because they did look very, very good. And of course, it saves Trippier running across half the bloody pitch. But I would say for the next game against Crystal Palace, Kieran Trip, yeah, but just by the way, I'm not jumping all on one boat. I'm not all on a bandwagon. I, it just Kieran Trip, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, um, can I just say quick? Like, I see some people in the comments say, um, Tino, yeah, he's for the future. Like, if all that, Tino is for, he's now, he's now, and he's for the future. Like, I don't believe he's just for the future and all that. I think he's now. You get what I'm saying? And as Josh said, and some others have said in the comments, um, Tino can also play on the left. Obviously, we know that um, on the left, on the left that role. I, I don't really, I don't really like him on that side. I think he's sometimes a little bit vulnerable. Obviously, he's better than probably Hall in terms of vulnerability that, that, on, on that side. But for me, I don't know, man. I think Tino's now. I just think he's now. Like, that's just my personal. I think Jordy Two for Life uh, also mentioned. I think he put his his back four out, and I actually think he put Trippier on the left, who who can also play on the left as well. So yeah. that that's the alternative too. So I, I thought that was quite interesting when I saw him there. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, yeah, because you talked about set pieces and, and deliveries, which definitely Trippier is is better at. But you know it. We're, if we're if we're all all action, all press, all intensity, you need pace, uh, and our defense has lacked pace, and that is what Tino Livramento gives you. It gives you that pace. To be fair, Johnny made a great point about um, Emil Kraft coming. Emil Kraft has that little bit of a of additional pace that Trippier doesn't have, and sometimes he can get back and, and recover. I think he he made a really good recovery in the second half. Um, I think it was against Tino Werner, um, where the ball gets played in behind, and it looks like Werner's going to get on the end of it. And Kraft makes a great run back, uh, uh, electric pace, and just just sweeps the ball clear. And it's just having that as a difference that I think if it was Trippier, he probably wouldn't get there. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, I th like Kieran Trippier has been so important for Newcastle United. And this is not me being sort of negative on Tri Kieran Trippier at all. But I, I, I do think that at times this season, because all of our play goes through him, it is easy to counteract at times. And if you stop Kieran Trippier playing, Newcastle United don't play. And I think what we've been able to develop, particularly recently, with Kieran Trippier not being in the team, is an alternative way to play. So now Newcastle United can play down the left, we can play down the right, and no team can put their tactics together to like very like very specifically stop us playing because we've got alternative ways of playing. And I think that was proven against Tottenham. 
Okay. Gordon was rapid and destroyed one of the best left backs in the Premier League in Indoggy down his left down side on Newcastle's right. But equally, Harvey Barnes and Elliot Anderson with his overlaps was destroying their right hand side with Pedro Porro. And, and, and they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to stop us. And I just think we need to come up with an alternative for Kieran Trippier and his way of playing. I actually think Kieran Trippier and disagree with me if you if you don't agree. I think Kieran Trippier would be perfect for our European campaign if we're in the Europa League or the Europa Conference. That experience going away to these sort of lesser teams and being able to navigate the team through it if we're making a few changes. Whereas in the Premier League, you're going with Kira, um, sorry, with, with Tina Livermento. But that that's just me at this moment in time. That's kind of how I'm thinking if we get European football. Keep it fresh, yeah. That, that's for sure, Pete. Yeah, and have, have those options. So, it's, as, and as I think as uh, Ian Toon Trader said, it's, uh, it's, it's a great problem to have, for, mm. for Eddie to have, and, and for us as well, guessing the team sheet. Ian Toon Trader, great to have you in the chat, mate. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, the, the, I know there's a number of questions for, from the some chat. Great questions. We, we can get some quick fires through um, before Let's we wrap up. First, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so and some great questions here. Uh, I want to go to this one first. From, of course, Toon Gamer. He, he's a legend of questions, Toon Gamer. He asked the question that Minta has quite a few admirers, apparently, for 20, 25 million. Would you sell him or keep for next season as he could be a huge talent in the future? Johnny, I'm going to land that one on you first. Well, I know he's Take massively, I know he's massively uh, popular in, in, in Holland, isn't he? Uh, doing really, really well for Fire Nord. Um, I I personally say you've got you've got to keep him for at least one season. Let 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 Eddie let Eddie Howe have a look at him in the summer and see and see how he thinks uh, he should be used this season or for next season rather. So I would rather I'd like to see him because it, I I don't I'll be honest with you, I don't really watch a lot of foreign football. I really don't. Um, you know I know Sam in particular takes the Mickey out of us for not watching a little bit of foreign football because he's been saying last two years two years ago he said. Got to get Alexander Rees out in the 84. Sandro Tonali, a little bit out of our depth, but probably not. We're probably not going to get him, but he would be perfect for Newcastle as well. So we we're waiting for the Sam Milner prediction for next for next for the summer. But in terms of Minter, I'd like to I'd like to have a have a look at him in terms of well, with what he's up against right now, in terms of Barnes, Gordon, uh, Miggy Almiron, Murphy, those kind of four players that are our main wingers at this moment in time. Is he better than any of them? Is he worse? Is he worse than any of them? I know Specs is shaking his head. He's 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 going to tell me he's been watching the final all season probably, so he's probably in a better position to comment on it. But I I I I'd like to think the fact that he's playing you know, in a final or no mugs, so a big club, yeah. so a big club with a lot of a lot of big history and great great tradition about them. So I would like to I'd like to see him play at least one season for Newcastle, and then we can make our own minds up. We have to go to, to Specs, uh, or he lose it with, with this question. Go on, go over it, Specs. No, it's cool. Like, it's not Johnny's fault. Like, obviously, the Johnny ain't seen, but I'm just like, I'm just mind boggling thinking, please, bro, just take a little time. Uh, I know you're not a busy lads over there, the fans' TV and that. Go take a little time out, uh, go see this guy, bro. He is sick, bro. When I, bro, I'm on the first me. flight, Specs. I'm on the first flight. Man, <laughs> look. We got just the trailer for next season. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it, it, it's a bit like the Isaac thing, like J Johnny said. Here, yeah. I've been watching Isaac from day, and even when I was telling Arsenal fans, "Oh, you are crazy! You should go for Isaac." They're like, "I don't want Isaac. I don't want Isaac. Isaac? What? We got Gabriel Jesus." Now, sometimes as British fans of the Prem, we're a bit bougie a little bit. Let's be honest, Prem. Some of really watched other, you know. But I knew Isaac was on a set pace. Not like this, though. But I knew he was on a set pace. Now, if Joss, yes, he likes um, AS, um, ASM. If we take Mint, Minte back next season, trust me, Josh, all of you will like Minte, bro. He's literally, I know it's, it's the River DC and it's not the Prem. But trust me, this guy's got pace. He can run past players. Like, he's, he's a bit more sure by himself than I say ASM in terms of the decision makings and all that. He scores goals, he gets assists. I just saw him in the game when they batted Ajax 6 0 last weekend. Again, he could go a couple of goals, I think, and assist. I'm telling you, John, Amron ain't got nothing come. Hell no. And 
believe me when I say this and click this, click this, he would be, he'd definitely be com competing with the likes of Gordon or Barnes. Trust me. Like, he would want me to stay as a, he's just there. Trust me. So when I see the, the, the question about 20, 25 mil, hell no. Keep him. Don't ever stop selling. Just keep him. And remember, we've got to learn from this season. Squad depth. Even if you had all our players, the squad depth for me weren't big enough. And if you've got a buzzing player like Minte, this adds to the squad, especially if you go to Europe. And and the kind of Europe that we're looking to go into, let's say, Europa Conference, it's kind of more games and more, it's, it's a lot. So to have a player like that, to add to the squad depth, 100%. 100%. Trust me, John. Watch out for Minte, bro. He's cold, bro. I'll take you word for it. I'll take you word for it, Specs. I'll be, I'm oh, gonna, I've just literally, as as you're talking, I've just booked my flight to Holland to the <laughs> finals next game. So there you go. You've 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 you convinced me anyway. Check him out, man. Honestly, you, man. You, you nearly went as far as Pete did with ASM, and he he he, uh, he had him in the running for a Ballon d'Or at one stage. I think was that right, Pete? You were you were going to you were going <laughs> to uh, attend <laughs> with him. <laughs> No, I didn't. <laughs> Let's rewind. Let's rewind. We could go there. Uh, let's go to Josh and, and his thoughts on Minta. Do you know what it is? I've always said, like, you, you can't give this lad a fantastic season of football and just let him jump ship straight away. You know, you, you're not going to see his potential. And not only that, you know, next season he could have another fantastic loan spell if it is fine or yet again or somewhere. There's the Spanish League or the Bundesliga, anywhere else where it is kind of a upper level on fire in order and if he has a fantastic season there his price goes up even more you know I don't want them flashbacks of selling even Tony too early or Mikel Marino going out the door I know they're completely different situations but you know what I mean you don't want to see wasted potential when this lad's been brought and he's got so much hype he's not going to jump ship straight away but what I personally love about Air Minter of course that when Feyenoord absolutely smashed Ajax in the Classic I believe it's called 6-0 by the way Ajax had fell off so bad but anyways away from that not only did he get two Two goals and an assist in that game. What I absolutely loved about Minte, if you watched that game, and of course, I actually looked at the statistics, he won 10 out of, 10, 10 out of his 15 ground duels. They, that is exactly what Eddie Howe wants, by the way. It's basically like Anthony Gordon on the right-hand side. So this lad, he's bagging goals, he's giving service to the striker, and he's grafting hard as well. I mean, that sounds exactly like what, what we want as Newcastle United fans. But I will say, 19 years old, He's not going to come in the Premier League at night. Well, it's unlikely. Of course, we don't know. But at 19 years old, he's not going to come in and absolutely kill it. I believe in my opinion. I think he'll get one more year on loan. If Eddie wants to bring him back, you know, he likes what he sees already. I think pre-season will be the indicator. But um, no, certainly not selling Minta at this stage in the whatsoever. There's so much more potential that we need to see as well. He did sign, man. I think our, our fans will like him. Because our fans like those kind of nippy plays that can be an excitement. So, like, trust me, I think 19 years old or whatever, like, I, I genuinely believe it just makes sense. He's so cold for me. Like, I don't, like, they don't, for me personally, and Josh has got a point, don't rush him, you know what I mean? But there's, he's already doing it at a big club, not the biggest league, but on the big stage. They love him over there. They absolutely love him over there. They don't want him to go back to Newcastle, to get what I'm saying. So I genuinely believe He's ready now, not to say play every game, but he's ready now to be part of the squad. Now, what are we waiting for? Let's implement him slowly, be part of the squad. Trust me, you put him on for the last 30 minutes or so, when people are a bit leggy, he's got that, he's nippy, and he's got that pace, that burst. And it, trust me, he will, scare, he will scare some defenders. I promise you that. Yeah, Can I just add as well, lads? You know, normally when we're thinking about players coming back from loan, of course, I've not had that many uh, players with high potential go out on loan in the previous years. It's not as if he's like out on loan at Birmingham City and he could be someone special. Do you know what I mean? Now I'm actually thinking of it. This lad's got four appearances in the Champions League and scored in the Champions League as well. I mean, you can't say that very often for your loan. He's kind of scoring in the Champions Same. League. So Same. at such a young age, he's got so, so much valuable experience already. But Still, yet again, I know people will make comparisons. Well, Lewis Smiley, 17, you know, he's been fantastic for Newcastle this season. If he's 19, of course he can play. It doesn't always work like that, but it certainly, certainly will not be selling them. 100% we will not be selling them. Show sure me we got one right, eventually. <laughs> um, Specs, I've won for you. Uh, 
Barry Simpson asks the question for Dread. <laughs> is that JSI's brother, Deji, or someone else? No, nah, it's, it's a, nah, that was on the um, Never a Foul show. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, if you go about Instagram, you'll see the um, the clips. Yeah, we, we were cool, man. Well, well, I hope it's cool with me. You get what I'm saying? It was, I was, I went off on one, in it. Oh, I absolutely went off, like, on everyone. I was quite having it. So, <laughs> I could be fiery like that, like, you get me? It depends what show I'm on. I like to read the room, in it. You get what I'm saying? Obviously, we're all family here. And we all can disagree or agree, but we're family, we're Newcastle, so it's not going to get like that. That shows us a different, it's not built for everyone. That shows wild. You go have thick skin for that show. But me and Deji are cool. And just a quick one off topics, um, maybe to um, um, the Lord of my crew. Do you, do you know what's happening with, what's his name? The dark, dark skin brother, QO, the Australian. Remember all the hype about him? That, 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 I wonder, I wonder what his future lies. Yeah, you know anything? I don't know what he's saying about him, bro. He's he's not he's not had a great time on loan. Um, albeit I think there's been a change of manager during the season, so it's made a it bad decision, bro. You think it's bad bad places they've sent him to? Do you think that's part of it as well, or like? You, no, or you haven't I, watched him that well. I, I, I'm not sure about this season. I think he's been lucky this season because of the change of manager. You know, when, when it happens, particularly if you're alone and a, a new manager comes in, they might just not fancy you or you might just not be getting the, the same amount of minutes. Uh, what I was, what I'll be honest with you, what I was disappointed about is him going on loan to Scotland the first time. I, I know why they did it. It is it, because there was Australian players there and they used it as a way to settle in. It wasn't too far away from Newcastle. But for me... I think I would have liked to have seen him being exposed to a higher caliber of football. Um, with, with all due respect to, to Scotland as a league, I, I think he should have gone uh, and played at a high level, um, and oh, and as well being put into a team where he's going to be the man and he's going to play every week, not just come off the bench and play ten minutes, fifteen minutes there. Because if that was the case, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'd have bought him and kept him in in Australia. <laughs> That's what. That's ultimately what yeah. we were doing there before we signed him. Is that they were just bringing him off the bench and he was kind of being the match winner and all the rest of it. If you're going to develop as a player and be a player that could be potentially playing for a top team in Europe, as Newcastle United are, like you want him to be playing week in week out, and that's what he wasn't doing. And it's that for me was was a really bad move. Um, yeah. And I think that was a show that I'm here to move. Uh, so uh, I think what needs to happen next is exactly that, in my opinion. What needs to happen, he needs to go to a team where he's going to play every week regardless and he's going to get loads of minutes under his belt because that's the only way you're going to get a consistent amount of football to be able to properly have a look at him and go, he's a player or he's Ooh. not. We need to move him on, and then where is it? Like, where is he? Like, what League One Championship? Is League One too low? Depending on who it is, Championship, I'd say. I, I, I would be. There's no reason why he can't go to a lower team in the Championship, like and play. Yeah. Every, uh, let, let's be honest, like for, for someone like him, there's no reason. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, boys. G give me your opinions. There's no reason why you couldn't have asked Grand Kowal to go to a team like Sheffield United. Oh, it's not Sheffield United, sorry. Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. who were battling at the lower end of the championship, or a Rotherham, who would have gladly taken a player like that. And they, yeah, he would have been in a relegation battle. But you know yeah. what? It had played at a high level of football. It had played every week. And yeah. you know, what, what does that do to certain players when they keep a team in the league and play every week and they're playing good football? It can only be a good thing because they're going to come back to you full of confidence. Yeah. I, I just... I don't know. I mean, look, look at what Elliot, Elliot Anderson did. I, I, would, I, would, I would argue slightly differently. I would actually say, well, look, at, I, I hate using this club as an example, but look at Ahmad Diallo at Sunderland last year. Hmm. He was absolutely outstanding for them. And he pretty much single-handedly took them to the playoffs. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't, they, they, them but wouldn't have got to the playoffs without him. I'll be saying, well, Grand Cole, I'm not saying go to Sunderland, but go to a team maybe who have aspirations, like a Preston maybe. Or Norwich, or somebody mm. like that, to go right, get them mm. into the Premier League, yeah, or get them at least into the playoffs. I think, I, I think it's an easy thing to do is just get them to a Sheffield Wednesday or a Rotherham and go keep them up. 
Well, let's be honest. So you look at the championship right now, there's 10 teams battling for survival yeah. there. You know, there's not many teams that are battling really, like apart from the top three all crumbling in the top of the championship right now. I know uh, where Pete Lewis Celeste is a bit all over the place right now, but, you know, put them in a club. Middlesbrough might be even a, not a bad show. Middlesbrough are a club obviously looking to try to get into the, the playoffs. They're kind of one or two players away from really getting into that real fight to get into that top six. I think they're just going to miss out this season. I'll be thinking, well, again, a bit like the the like the, uh, the the heart slowing. It's not too far away from the northeast. He's going to have pressure week in week out because Middlesbrough fans aren't going to take players being absolutely dr- dreadful for them. You know what I mean? And, and the, the, there is a bit of an expectation that they need to try and get into the playoffs. And Michael Carrick is a good coach who can develop younger players. I'll be thinking that might be something that they could look into for next season. But again, it's about getting. This is like I say with. Sure, Rami Obi, it's getting the loans right because of the yeah. right. We've seen so many loan moves for so many different players, and it just hasn't worked out for whatever reason. You know, they'll everyone look at the Ellie Anderson, the Bristol Rovers. That was a great uh, move for all parties, but we knew quite quickly that Ellie Anderson was way above League Two level, yeah. you know, but he got that experience. But it was at the top end, it was at the top end of League Two. You get Bristol Rovers promoted, you come back with Bristol Rovers being promoted a bit like even. Back when Mitrovic was sent out of full, and you get them into the, you get them into the Premier League a little bit. So, yeah, I'll be looking at top end rather than bottom end. So, so what? So what would you do now with Garan Kowal? Because, like for me, because we don't know where his levels at. Like, I, I, and, and to be fair, you're absolutely right. You'd want him to be top end where they're fighting for a promotion of some sort. So, would you? The question I've got is: Would would a team fighting for the playoffs in the Championship take? Grand Kowal and play him week in week out when we don't know what his what his level is, or would you put him in a League One team that are likely to go and win the league? So I'm just using an example that this will change because some teams will go. But like for example, where Dwight Gale is right now at a Derby County fighting at the top end of the League One, or a Bolton Wanderers who are also at the top there, Peterborough, Portsmouth. Would you give him a run at one of those teams that are likely to be winning every week, playing every game, and going up to the championship? Or would you, you know, what 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 would you do now? I'd, I'd, go, I'd go championship. And the reason why I would say go to the championship is that I think if he can't do it in the championship then you know that he's probably not going to be able to do it for Newcastle. I think League One's a bit of a different one because you've got good teams in League One. But you saw with Sunderland, Sunderland were playing teams like big clubs like your Sheffield Wednesdays and Bolton's. But one week, the next week, they could be playing Shrewsbury and Burton Abbey with the greatest of respect. So mm. I'd put them in the Championship. And look, you play 50 games a season in the Championship. You play 46 in the league. You've got your FA Cup, your League Cup. He's going to get opportunities. You know, let's say, let's call it 50 games to really make it, an, uh, I think, really make a, what's it called, a go of it and, yeah. and try and get into that team. Like you might not get in straight away, but you've got so many chances to get in. And if you come off the bench or you do get given that opportunity to start, you've got to take it. But we, we don't, I think it, that is different. It is difficult because we don't know how good he is. But I just think League One's just such a massive drop. You know, it, it really is. Like we've been like, if he, like I say, if he could make it in the League One, he's definitely ain't good enough for us. But it's again, maybe he's got one last chance, really, because if this loan doesn't work out, Newcastle might just say, "Look, it just hasn't worked out. Go somewhere else." Mm. Yeah, definitely. I'm interested. Um, yeah, we're going to take one last question, and also I just remembered we have the prize draw as well that we have. I, I yes. totally forgot about. It. Chris wasn't here to remind me, so we'll draw three, three names. And uh, apologies, this is the last question. If you want to blame anyone, blame Specs for bringing up Garen Cole. <laughs> and if you want to, so you want to really blame, blame Specs, go subscribe to his channel and tell him, tell him how <laughs> how annoyed you are that your question hasn't been. Uh, you were meant to drag out right now. I promise you, mate. Just went out of hand. That was a great question. That was a great what? question. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Josh for 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 this one. Uh, and it's a question from Jimmy. What? Jimmy asked the question with rumors saying Wilson will be leaving next season. Who would you like to see come in realistically? Realistically, I mean, 
I think the one that's been sort of talked about quite a lot is Benjamin Sesco. But if, if we're talking about like Wilson going out and Sesco coming, and that is a, a fantastic sort of business move there. But it's not like we're going to sell Wilson and that money is going to get us Benjamin Sesco. You know, I mean, how much would we get for Wilson? I mean, injury prone, just about 32 years old now, barely playing any games. I, I don't think we'd get much from at all. Benjamin Sesco, on the other hand, he's attracting. I've seen today actually attracting a lot of interest from the likes of Manchester United, um, overseas as well in the Bundesliga. So there is some really, really big competition there. I, I, I'd love to see Benjamin Sesco personally. I think he's twenty years old. He might be. Um, honestly, he's done. He's done fantastic. He's, he's been around the block for quite a while as well. I think he was doing okay over in Austria for RB Salzburg as well, in another Austrian team before that. But uh, I, Benjamin Sesco would be my main priority at striker. He's not good enough just yet to overtake Alexander Isak, which, yet again, is, it's exactly what we want. Alexander Isak is the main man in that team who has to be prioritised. He's the with Bruno, the leading men of this project, so, uh, so to be called. So I, I would like to see Benjamin Sesco come in. And, of course, very versatile as well. I believe he can play all across the, the front three. Good call. Good call there, Josh. Johnny, we'll go to you next, and uh, we'll rule out your brother as an option in this one, even though he uh, does have that trusty left foot. But um, who would you like to see coming in? Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? It really, really is. Um, I can see Wilson going to Wolves, by the way, or Brentford. Mm. Both desperately need a striker. I think that'll be uh, interesting to see where, where he goes if he does leave in the summer. Um, in terms of players that I'd like to see come in, oh, it is a different one. Like, Sesco is the obvious, isn't it? He would be. Ooh, he would be outstanding um, in Newcastle shirt. I, I, I would love to see that. I, like I say, in terms of the, the lack of foreign football that I do watch, I do know that he, he's, a, he's a good player, Sesco. Um, ooh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Um, if I'm looking, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to be a bit, a bit uh, I'm thinking a bit closer to home and thinking more Premier League. Um, because we just because that's obviously more than my bread and butter, which I know Specs will be going. There's more than just the Premier League. There's more than just the Premier <laughs> League. <laughs> but I, I do like Neto from Wolves. I do like Neto, but I just think he's just going to be a bit too expensive. I think he, I think he's so good. Uh, yes, I said when Wolves played Newcastle at Molyneux, he really impressed me in terms of how he just you know he just took the ball by the horns and really got Wolves going up the pitch. I just think we're going to be priced out of that move, but. You never know. You never know. Something can be done. It'd be, it'd be great to see him in a Newcastle shirt, especially on that right-hand side. Again, he is yeah. a little bit injury-prone, which is a bit off-putting. But there is an option. Mm. Interesting. Nice one. Johnny, same question to you, Specs. Who would you like to come, to see come in in uh, Sir Wilson? Bro, I keep it real. And people might want to call me crazy and probably won't believe in me no more. Like, Specs, you're talking rubbish, mate. But me, I like to. I, I, I'm, I'm always, from when I was young, I've always been an admirer of looking at certain so called gems or potential players in the championship. Especially these days, I think there's a few players in the championship that can play in the Prem, and they, these days, they do look, do look in the championship for certain players. So the one that I've kept my eye on for a while, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's to our ambition or where we want to go, but sometimes you've got to think out of the box, man, especially with FFP. And the guy I've been watching quite closely, and I think he will fit in in terms of giving him service, he's good again on, on the end of things, is um, that Sims guy, he plays for commentary. And I think he should play for Everton, but he's at commentary. If you ain't checked him out, I'm not saying he looks um, anything like fanciable, but when I've seen him, he given the ball, he gets into the box, just feed him, and he can nick goals. And I think around our bit our echelon of players, sometimes you've got to think out of the box. I'm not saying he's the final puzzle, but for me, if Wilson was gonna be injured, and it's kind of similar ish to Wilson, I'll go for um, a younger player like that. Why not? I like to think out of the box sometimes, man. It's not always what everyone's thinking, you know what I'm saying? The Cisco's goals and all that and this FFP business, I think sometimes you just got to think out of the box, man. For me, you ain't checked him out. Wait, wait, but do you not even know who I'm talking about? That's the that's the, that's the, that's the other question. No, yeah, I've checked him out. He's a player for Sunderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Everton. Was it Everton, Josh? Was he Everton? It's Sunderland as well, yeah. He's, he's, oh, okay. he's, he's from, I think he's from, he came through at Everton, but yeah. he had a loan spell at Sunderland. 
Yeah, yeah, he's he's like at some point. Well, check, him, check him out, man. If him, him actually alone has put Coventry in this semi final position in the FA Cup, you got like he's he's fair, trust me, fair, fair. he gets in the box. He trust me, I promise you, man. But yeah, that's my opinion. No one has to agree with me. I'm just putting it out there. Man, interesting. Can I, can I just chuck up one more name, lads? Go for okay. it. So, by the way, I'm not saying, by all means, please, everyone, take in the context. I'm not saying he's going to come in and replace Isako. He's even, he's not even really, he's not even probably good enough to be our second striker. But one man I'd love to see at Newcastle, it's, it's, do you know Adebayo from Luton? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm not nah, saying... He's cool. No, he's, he's not going to come in and set the world alight. He's not going to absolutely, you know, fill the boots of Alexander Rysak. But when we're playing, you know, four competitions, FA Cup, yeah. Carabao, Prem, yeah. uh, whatever European competition we get, his hold-up yeah. play is actually very, very good. He's very physical. He, he's mm-hmm. not a bad penalty taker either. Do you know what it is? If we've got to... If we've got a young lad as a striker, someone like a Benjamin Sesquano, he will cost a lot. If we've got someone of that calibre who was coming up, someone like Adebayo, I really, really would like as well. I hear you, bro. I heard it. Hundred. Interesting. Well, there'll be teams after him. You know, yeah, if, yeah. especially if Luton go down, he won't stay yeah. there. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, just I just thought of someone, but I just because only because I literally just come to the top of my head now. So apologies, as I know you want to wrap up very shortly. Morgan Gibbs White. Big fan of Morgan Gibbs White. Oh yeah, big, big, big yeah. fan of Morgan Gibbs White. And apparently, like Forrest only won fifty million from because of the FFP. I'm thinking he he was the best player in the park again against us at St James's, and I thought he had his moments against the City ground. But yeah, big fan of Morgan Gibbs White. I think he's got the arrogance to come to Newcastle, and you know, I want to play in week in week out. He's young. He's got Premier League experience. He's he's yep. not afraid of playing for you know big clubs. He's played at like Forest and Wolves, big clubs and. In that part of the world as well, so yeah, I think uh, and his stats are good as well. Like, he's, like you say, he scored at the weekend against his former club in Wolves. So I, I would love to see him in a Newcastle shirt. I think he's outstanding. Yeah, I hear that. He's quality. He, he's yeah, he's great. ready. That bear in mind, he's Anthony Gordon's best, one of one of his closest friends in football. Like oh, they, yeah. they play they played together under twenty ones. Um, He's got the same trajectory as Anthony Gordon, but he's yeah. just doing it at Forest. For me, I've said it for a while, he's ready for his next move. He's ready for the step up. He does yeah. not want to be... He's he's too good to be fighting relegation uh, week, yeah. year, year out. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think I, I completely agree. I think without I, you could just imagine the WhatsApp messages between the pair of them. I'll, I'll, I'll pretend Chris is Anthony Gordon. Lad, you've got to come up, don't you? You've got to come to Newcastle. Lad, you've got to come to Newcastle. <laughs> That's a very good impression, actually, of Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let's let's do the draw before we uh, I forget again. But uh, I'll bring up the the spinny wheel. Uh, hopefully, it's still working there in the background. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. I'll just make it a bit bigger on screen so you can see it. Uh, what is that? Uh, the field doesn't get bigger. It's just the names. But all the names are in. There's 110 names in the hat. So we're going to have three prizes. And it's all courtesy also of our new sponsor in terms of uh, Manscaped. And if you uh, w- wish to purchase something from Manscaped, if you go to manscaped.com uh, and use the, the code LOADED20, uh, you will get 20% off and free shipping. So go check that out. And they have a, a, a number of different um, items for sale there on the website. Uh, so I'm going to spin for the first. This is for prize number three. Oh, one, one, two, or three, Pete. Uh, we're going to go in order. So this is for prize number one, and this is for um, the Shears 2.0. Um, uh, this is a nice little kit. Um, that Manscaped put together. So this is an opportunity to win prize one. You're the expert at the wheel. I should have really let you do this, Pete. Um, <laughs> well, here it goes. Best luck to everybody. They have rocking this. Yeah, I like to uh... run it. <laughs> Toon Army Netherlands, congratulations. Everyone in the Toon Army Netherlands group, uh, congratulations. Uh, you are prize winner number one. Uh, so that's I was going to remove you from the, the wheel and we're going to spin again. So that's number one. Here we go. Prize number two. What's pri- uh, for prize number two, Pete? Uh, prize number two is 
the crop shaver the crop shaver is a three blade groin razor um so not only is manscape got their new blades they've got a crop shaver too uh and so that is our prize number two on offer best luck here we go oh Hey! hey. <laughs> Journey two for life. Yeah. Uh, yes, get in, get in. Oh, all he's laughing at us and and us promoting Manscaped stuff. Now, Journey two for life. Uh, you can come on the show and tell us how it works out for you. Uh, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> so we'll remove Journey two for life for from, uh, from the man. Oh. What's an offer for prize number three, Pete? Okay. Uh, prize number three uh, is the Ultra Smooth Package. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we've got a number of things in here. This is uh, the, the big prize, the, the, the final prize of the evening. Um, so, yeah, the Ultra Smooth Package. Got a few different creams and various other things in there. I think you might even have a... A crop shaver and a few other things added in, so it's a nice little package there from Manscaped. And um, they are they are doing the business right now. I can't mind. It's specs, it's specs in this drawer, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's a loaded order than it would be, but <laughs> sorry, I feel like it anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, here we go. Best look to everyone again. Winner is Harry. Harry. So if your name is Harry, <laughs> don't contact us. <laughs> congratulations. It'd be easy to track you down, Harry. Yeah. But, uh, congratulations. The winner of, of our third prize of the night. We're um, all done, man. We're all done. Um, we're all done. Three winners. Contact us, contact Chris all or any, any of us, and we'll put you in contact with Chris and we'll sort out you getting your prize. Um that's it. Um thanks, thanks to Johnny, to Josh, and to Specs for joining us tonight. Um lads, let's give you a, a shout out to, to let's say where the, everyone can find you. Johnny, we'll start with you. Yeah, Newcastle fans TV on YouTube, uh, in particular, we'll be at the we're at every game pretty much. Next game's Palace Leagues down at Palace and a big congratulations to the women's team who uh, got promotion, back-to-back yes. -back promotions, champions. They're going to be playing in the championship. So all the women's games, all the men's games. And, yeah, so two games left in the women's season. All the Premier League games will be there. I'm at Burnley, if any of you are at Burnley. So if, you, if you're going to – I'll be at the cricket, cricket club lunchtime for the Burnley game if you come along and say hello. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Nice to Johnny. Specs, where can we find you? Yeah, man. Oh, it says it there. Jordy Dread TV on YouTube. Same name on the Instagram, on the Twitter X, and on TikTok. And yeah, you can find me there. I think I'm on 943 or 942 subs. So I've come a long way in open this space of time. And hopefully, long may continue. And appreciate you guys, the Audit Max, everyone in the chat, that people, that the fans and the viewers. Where, where are we? You know what I mean? So big up to. Them as well, and we got all of you guys, man. I appreciate. Nice one, specs. Love it, Josh. Where can we find you? You can find us uh, just under Jody Josh on any social media, but well, just about every social media you'll probably find. Um, just do every sort of Newcastle content you can think of, honestly. Just talk and waffle on absolutely anything Newcastle United. No, but seriously, look, fantastic show, lads. Look forward to not only see you on the show game, but in real life very, very soon. That next charity match will be fantastic. And by the way, I just want to say something. Yeah, I don't want to go on like a complete tangent like we did with that Garan Paul question, but Jonathan said something about, of course, the women's fantastic achievement. Did you actually know, right? And I don't want to build a complete conversation about this. I've seen something that if the women get something like Champions League football, we as Newcastle United it's... men get more money to spend as an incentive. How fantastic is that? I heard Adam P say that, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I found about it as well. Amazing, like I say, it all, it all helps. Like I say, the women were doing this on Sunday. They were lifting the trophy. Sorry, I can't see that. I can't see that. <laughs> I, 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 
I'll stop. No, no, you're right. Thank you're you, right. Thank you. you're, not, you're never coming on again, Johnny, anyway. No. Uh, <laughs> no, no, oh, you great. deserved it. But uh, no, make sure you describe, subscribe to all the lads uh, and subscribe to us as well. Uh, um, Specs mentioned he's, he's heading towards 1k. We're trying to make it to, to, to 10k ourselves, and all the lads are trying to increase their, their subs. So, uh, nice one. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and um, we will be back sometime soon. I don't know when, but we'll be back uh, before you know it. Uh, but that is it for the night. Um, enjoy the games if you're going to watch any of the games that are on tonight. And Josh, you said you liked this uh, area, so do you want to say the, the magic words? How you like that?